Hey, Bruce, you know, Grove here. So uh, glad to and happy to see you again. Uh, it's been a little bit of a while since Phil and I have gotten to spend some time with you. I uh, hope you are doing well. And I uh, just wanted to thank you so much for being here and uh, speaking to us as Texas RIAs, Texas largest association of real estate investors. And uh, just want to give you a little bit of a moment to uh, just tell us a little bit about you and uh, a little bit of your history, your career of helping entrepreneurs be successful and uh, maybe starting out in the business. Oh, very cool. How are you, Shanoa? It's been a while. Definitely been a while. Tell Phil I said hi. I will. I was, I was telling Tracy, I definitely recognize faces, so I do remember you for sure. And I just want to know, for, how are you doing? Are you safe and, and okay down there? Uh, I feel incredibly lucky uh, to have survived uh, uh, some of the biggest storms we've ever seen here in Texas. But uh, yeah, survive and thrive. Apparently, I have skills I never even knew about. So <laughs> hey, that's it. You got to be in touch with the skills that you're best at. I um, was born in Oklahoma and then for about nine months was there. But I, I grew up in Dallas, Texas for six years of my life as a kid. And, you know, Texas is incredible. Could be a country all to itself, as we well know. But, you know, in my growth period with my dad, who was very entrepreneurial minded, ran Fortune 500 companies, never graduated high school, learned everything on his street smarts. I was taught that, you know, growing up and working beside him and I got my entrepreneurial spirit from him. Um, when I had my first business, uh, my jewelry business in high school, when I was 17, making necklaces and bracelets and um, earrings for the girls and the, and the teachers in school and clearing 800 a thousand a month in 1974, which is God knows what that kind of money is today. Um, it really cut my teeth on the fact that I realized I could never work for a salary. I have to work for what I'm worth and, and receive what I'm worth based on commissions or anything else. And I got in the telemarketing industry at 18 and I started my first corporation when I was 19, which just told me that I wanted to work for myself. And I was, I was going to college <clears throat> for two years and I stopped. I said, you know what, I'm going to go in the streets. I'm going to learn business. If I have to go back to school, if I don't make it, I will go back to school. I just give me two years in the streets to, to hone my businesses, hone my business skills. And I never wound up going back to college. And I owned a number of different businesses since then in a variety of different areas. Um, but one thing I always loved when I was working with salespeople was helping to become the best salespeople, to make the biggest paychecks, to get the biggest reward for their efforts. And I found that motivation of people and seeing people make money and be happy around me was a, was a big fulfillment for me, a big passionate thing that I loved. And as a result, I started doing public speaking and some coaching and the branding and, and it just kept through experience and trial and error to where I'm at today, where I'm known mostly for being the octagon announcer, the voice of the UFC octagon, which I've been doing now for 25 years. And also the manager of my brother, uh, the famous legendary, let's get ready to rumble announcer, Michael Buffer, who had managed for 30 years. And I built that brand with him from scratch to trademarking it to into a half billion dollar brand. I helped build the UFC brand in many ways that I helped them outside of just being an announcer and my own personal brand. It's time along with my IP and my voice and all the things I do with my voice and, and images <clears throat> uh, in respect to that in the brand. It just, it, I'm practicing all the same principles because to me, all business is the same. It's just the product that's different. So I had a success formula with Michael. I had a success formula with others through trial and error, through failure and success, thankfully few failures compared to the amount of successes I've had, thank God. But um, that's the way to do it. And I just find I love it. I love motivating people. I love, you know, helping them and seeing them successful because if they're successful around me, it'll all come back to me. That's my whole attitude. Yeah, I'll tell you the uh, uh, let's get ready and it's time. You can really just kind of change, hear it change the physiology you know, in you and in an audience and really bring up all of that energy that in some cases I would say brings people to their best, right? So I think that's a beautiful to even be able to see that in motion, right? And see uh, what that kind of gets, uh, brings out and, you know, the, the, the best people that are out there. So uh, I think that's, I think that's fantastic. I, I love that. And I love, you know, your, your just sort of uh, vision of just being of service and, and helping other entrepreneurs be successful as well. So um, I know that, that uh, you know, Phil and I get to do that on a uh, really on a regular basis because we have a, an organization that uh, here serves Texas and all these investors that are in Texas and right. gosh, nothing, you know, it's, it's not the money that I made as an investor that really kind of charged me up as much as is seeing other people put into play what we were able to, you know, help them with and charge them with. 
And then I really felt it went full circle as they went around to help other homeowners, right? Get out of maybe difficult situations. And then I just, it just kind of all comes back and it feels really good to give people those skills and that energy to be able to go out and make some of those great moves. Absolutely. You know, because in business, like we were describing, um, I find that the secret of success is delegation when you're running a company, one of the key factors, but also at the same time, when you're teaching, when I teach salespeople or whatever, is teaching people how to teach, how to teach. So it's like, it's like being in a direct marketing company, like an Herbalife or whatever. The only way you can ever build that organization is to teach people how to teach, how to teach. And if you teach them and duplicate yourself, through the trial and error, it'll take to duplicate yourself. But if you can't successfully duplicate yourself, you can expand your business easier. Absolutely. As an individual, we only have what we call 100%. Once you hit that 100%, there's no more, right? So you got to duplicate yourself. You got to delegate. I love that. So um, I uh, one of the questions I have for you is uh, your you know, I think, I think it, the duplicate, the duplication comes into play as you kind of hit your stride in your business. What would you say for someone who's just getting started? Like what would be some of the best advice you could have for someone who's just getting started in, in either real estate investing or really just in, you know, as, as you've been an entrepreneur in many different fields uh, over, over the years, what, what, what would you say is, is, is some of the best advice that you can give someone who's, who's just kicking it off? Well, you know, one of the biggest things I think people make a mistake about doing is making their initial expectations too high, right? So you want to set a realistic expectation for yourself, but at the same time, depending on your business, whether it's real estate investing or whether it's selling a product, a digit or a widget, I always believe that if you, if everybody is your customer within one mile radius of your base, you're a multimillionaire. So let's not concentrate on conquering the whole world, conquering the whole United States, wherever your geographical location is, concentrate on conquering and establishing your base and your brand within a one mile radius of where you're located, whatever that might mean to your business. Concentrate on that. Concentrate on establishing what your brand is, where, whether it's the company name, the web URL name, your email name, your business card name should all be exactly the same. You want to be known as one and one thing only, not abc.com and cbf, you know, dot org. It's like you want it all to be the same. You want to create this similarity and consistency in branding. And as an individual, the biggest thing I can say is, I hope and pray you're passionate about your business. Passion is very, very key. And this is probably one of the number one things because you need passion for your business. And if you don't have it, then ask yourself why you're doing it. Are you doing it just to make the buck? Or are you doing it because it's the only choice you have? Have you realized or searched out what your true passions are like in life are that you can monetize them? These are key questions you should ask yourself because without passion for your business and what you wake up every morning to do, there's a difference between going to work or living a lifestyle. If you're living a lifestyle, then you're going to be able to handle the punches that are going to be thrown at you, as well as your successes that you're going to achieve much more and enjoy them much more, more feeling, more everything. So passion about your business is very, very key. And again, if you don't have it and you're just doing something to do it, then ask yourself why you're doing it because there's uh -huh. such a long trek ahead of you. You better have some passion for what you're doing. That's, that's good advice because we do see some people who just have a passion to get away from what they're doing today. So that's not really enough, I think is what you're saying to kind of be able to sustain a business, right? It's not because you're living in the moment. You know, you want to think about life like chess. You want to think three steps ahead, right? If you live in the moment, it doesn't always prepare you for tomorrow. Yeah, I, and I love what you said about... Uh, uh, focusing on, you know, what's closest to you, right? And being known for, for that. So I, I'm a big believer in their riches and niches, right? So for us, our niche is Texas. So we know investing in Texas, we know the contracts, we know we have the contacts, we have the contractors. Uh, so that allows us to go deep in our niche and really be of service to the folks that are coming to us uh, for help. Because what we see is a, there are a lot of people out there who are trying to be everything to everyone and they can't go deep enough to really help any of the people who are you know, listening to them, right? So there's YouTube University, which I always joke, it doesn't really give a degree, but even if it did, it wouldn't be worth much because the knowledge is not organized, right? The knowledge is not deep. And if you're not around people who can be local to your market and really help you grow your business, you're going to miss something big. You're going to miss it big, but at the same time in your business, you want to be the leader and lead by example in your business and be the best in your business. You need to be able to do every single aspect of your business. 
whether it's writing the owner form, making the sale, making the phone call, whatever the case might be, you need to be the expert. It's like in Germany when I was a kid traveling there with my parents. I checked in and the girl at the front desk, suddenly she's cleaning my room the next day. Suddenly I'm in the restaurant and she's serving me my food. And I go, dad, why is she? I'm seeing the same girl. Because in Germany and the hotels, when they have to learn every aspect of the business so they can eventually one day run this hotel, right? Mm -hmm. I apply that to the business sense. If you can't do everything that you're asking somebody else to do, then you're making a mistake and you're not benefiting your employees by leading by example. You need to be the expert, right? You need to have it all down pat before you can tell somebody else what to do. It's yeah. called leading, leading by example, something yeah, we haven't that. really seen politically in our country recently. <laughs> <laughs> and all I, it, 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 I think we learned a few lessons here. So let's lead by example and be the best we can be. Yeah, I love the idea of uh, role model the way in, in every day and in every way. Yeah. And uh, for me, that's what I try to do uh, both in my business, uh, for the people that are part of my business and for my family, right? Uh, right. And, and, and it just kind of serves, you know, all the way around. So I think that's, I think that's a really crucial, uh, a really crucial idea. Now, how do you, you know, how do you, I, I want to make sure and make the distinction of, you know, maybe starting out in your business, knowing how to do everything, but then also going to the point where you're delegating, right? So I think you would also say, like, get to the point where you're, you know your business front and back, but then can very de quickly delegate and duplicate. So you're not constantly doing what, you know, in some cases might be a minimum wage activity for what you could be doing, right? That plus you want to avoid micromanaging to a point. That's why you want people to help you. If, if it gets to that point, if your business gets to that point where you can't you know, deal with it on your own, then you've got to make the choice to bring somebody in to help you. It's the only way you're going to be able to expand the business. And you mentioned something earlier about people driving into too many things. If you try to do two or three things at once, pardon my English, but you're going to do them half-assed. You, know, you want to concentrate on your point A to point B and develop that straight lines, just be a straight line, straight line point A to point B and get step one done, then go on to step two. Don't spread yourself too thin, concentrate on accomplishing one task at hand, having it set, having it working, having it running smoothly, then you go on to the next step, right? So you want to make sure you're giving everything 100%, not 40 or 50%. And there is a psychology of getting it accomplished and feeling good about that and then being propelled with a lot more energy to be able to do that next thing. So, it, yeah. It's like, uh, for me, I mean, I can cook, but I'm not a cook. But when I do cook, I get so much pleasure of the fact that I made that, right? <laughs> okay, so it's fun to cook. <laughs> Well, uh, Bruce, uh, obviously you're one of the uh, greatest announcers of all time and uh, would love if you wouldn't mind to, uh, 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 and I know I want to value your time and, and how much time you have you have today. And thank you so much for fitting us into your schedule. But would you mind uh, giving us a little announcement for Texas Rias as uh, the founder, you've got both founders, both Phil and Shanoa here. So love to have in your great voice uh, a little little bit of uh, an announcement for us so that uh, we can kind of go out in, uh, with that energy in our day as well. Sure. And give me the uh, Texas. Texas that? RIAs, uh, which is for, RIA stands real for Real Estate Investor Association, R-E-I-A-S. Very, cool. Very Hi, Phil. How are you, buddy? Good to see you again, Bruce. Great. Good to see you too. Okay. Hold on a second. now it's time this is the moment you've all been waiting for presenting the champions of real estate Shanoa and Phil of Texas Rias Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. So good to uh, hear that voice again. Uh, yeah. I, I know, I think the last time I heard that was when you and Phil uh, got stuck in Hawaii during a tsunami. Is, do I oh, remember okay, that yeah, right? Yeah, you remember that, Phil? With the yes. Yes. <laughs> attic of some comedy club or something. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Was Russell Peters was performing and all we're thinking about is 20 foot waves that maybe would envelop us and kill us when in reality it would have been like a three foot run down. The <laughs> it was like a wave this big. <laughs> yeah, which could still do some damage, right? But it was a fun night. Yeah. yeah it was all good. <laughs>
What's funny is my mom had just gotten back from Thailand where they had that huge tsunami and she, as uh, our son and I were all in the hotel while you guys were at the comedy club and literally like we were packing up everything in the hotel to go to the highest point on the island. And she looks at me and I'm holding like these rolls of toilet paper and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, mom, this is, this is white gold, you know, right, <laughs> disaster. Right, right. and uh, she's like, oh, oh yeah, pack those, pack those. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows what to do until they do it. It's, it's, it was a new situation for all of us, but it's all good. Yeah, I, 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 I'm curious. So especially with this year, you know, I, I always, uh, you know, always tell people, you know, what Mike Tyson's coach uh, said, which was everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Well, so yeah. how, how did, how did you uh, survive and thrive in uh, 2020 and how are you continuing to survive and thrive in 2021? Well, the way I put it is that you never know who you are until you get punched in the face. So what I put in my book. And um, right now, my business has increased probably 300%. Uh, with the whole virtual aspect of the videos, things like we're doing now uh, at BruceBuffer.com when I do the business videos or things like I just did for you on video for people to put on their Facebook page or something. Orders are coming in. Cameo, I mean, I'm doing tremendous business on Cameo, tremendous business for that. And then... You know, I released Puncher's Chance Bourbon, my bourbon, which is in Texas cool. now, huge success. And it, it got a 9.5 taste rating. This, this is really, really good. <laughs> and I take great pride in this. And I'm releasing the It's Time cologne and toiletry line all over the world in a month. You're going to walk in airports in Abu Dhabi or Paris. You're going to see Matthew McConaughey. And then you're going to see Bruce Buffer. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to oh, laugh cool. my ass off when I see that. But it's really... I'm with one of the biggest firms. We've created the most amazing cologne and product. I'm so happy about this. And I've got my energy product line going on all over the world too. I'm working on some very, very big projects right now. So oh, that's, wow. that's beautiful. That's, that's great to hear. We, Congratulations. Thank you. Are we still on uh, is this, we're just talking to each other now or we're, we're about to wrap up, I guess. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I yeah. Other stuff happening too, but I can't say it publicly. No, yeah, no worries. That makes sense. Uh, so uh, how I just I'm curious, how can people uh, who are listening and part of our group, um, how can they best support you? You know, if I can be of any benefit to you with the videos that I do and everything else, or, you know, the cameos are there, but I know that uh, JT Fox has all that in hand for me when you can go through JT to get the videos and any help I can be for you and your clients. Otherwise, just follow me on Instagram um, at Bruce Buffer UFC. And I make all my post there you know everything going on i just hit a million followers yesterday i just made a post about wow. that. It was always a nice little accomplishment i guess maybe i got to start putting on a bikini and you know <laughs> or i'm not sure but we'll yeah, see you did two million there. but no that's okay <laughs> that's okay i don't want to sell myself short i'll still keep doing it the way i do it <laughs> it's all good you know i'm just loving life and staying safe and uh, enjoying taking care of my loved ones and making sure everybody's handled and you know, this is a time where we're in the divided States of America instead of the United States of America. And I want to be in the United States of America. So I'm going to lead by example and be the best I can be to my sphere of influence. And that's really all I can do. Yeah. I love it. Put your head down, go to work. Yep, exactly. Well, Bruce, thank you so much for your time. And so good to see you again. And I look forward to maybe reconnecting in person uh, when it's all safe for us to uh, crawl out of our homes. But until Till then, let's all keep killing it. And uh, thank you. Good. We'll take care. See you soon. Thank and Tracy, you, big thank you to you as well. Yeah, we'll check I'm that out. I'm definitely going to try yeah. that. Are, are you in Vegas a lot, Bruce, by the way? I'm doing all the shows in Vegas. I leave tomorrow for Vegas to do the UFC. I go there. I get COVID tested, quarantine, do the show, and come home. And okay. I, I'm just, but are, are you frequently in Vegas? Oh, yeah. But just, I'd say probably two, currently two, three weeks, weekends a month. Okay. I go there and I come back, but I don't have time to do anything because I'm quarantined when I'm there. Okay. Maybe. Well, you know, maybe this post quarantine, we'll talk about an event or something in Vegas. Oh, no, no, that's fine. I can do that. You know, absolutely. Whenever that comes, but I think it's still a little wild before we can have the events. Yeah. I love doing the motivation. You guys know that I love helping people as best I can. So please contact me if you do something like that in Vegas. We will definitely do that. Thanks, okay. buddy. Thank you.